Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Parallax Abstraction, and welcome to another episode of Retro Flashback, showcasing gaming's roots for a new generation. Today we're taking a look at game number 5 in the Capcom Arcade Cabinet Collection for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and it's going to be another vertical shmup, but uh, kind of an interesting one. This is called Savage Bees, which was released in Japan under its more familiar name, which is, I believe it's pronounced Exed Exes, E-X-E-D-E-X-E-S. And it was renamed to Savage Bees by Memetron or Memetron, I'm not sure what their proper pronunciation of that is, which was the North American licensor of the game, or license, yeah, licensor. And yeah, this is a pretty interesting one. It's, it's another in a long series. I mean, Capcom shmups were kind of their bag for their, their first couple of years of existence, and this is certainly no, uh, no exception to that. But Savage Bees is pretty cool because it has a number of mechanical differences from a lot of other shmups at the time. Not unlike 1942 in a lot of ways when you think about it. It has... Because it uses, you're fighting this sort of weird alien race, it has no pretensions of adhering to any kind of realism or any type of realistically modeled vehicle or enemy type. So, for example, in 1942, you're playing as a plane that's fighting other planes and ships and things of that nature. But because you're fighting weird alien forces in this game, they had the freedom to just sort of create whatever weird things they wanted, enemy types they wanted, and behaviors. And that's actually what's really, really cool about this game is the variety of enemies in terms of their play style and behavior is quite significant compared to a lot of other games. Shmups generally tend to have certain basic enemy behaviors. They usually come at you either from the side or the top, and they generally tend to do some fairly predictable standardized behaviors that are fairly easy to to understand and avoid whereas in this game as you're already seeing here you've got ground enemies you've got air enemies you have entire waves of enemies that come at you from behind on the bottom of the screen which makes it really fun to avoid them as you're seeing right here you also have this weird mixes of what they call high point areas which is not unlike something that we saw in pirate ship higamaru recently it's a specific area where the enemies are much tougher, as you can see. They're much harder to take out, but they're also worth a lot more. And if you can occasionally pick up a POW, you will just turn them all into tomatoes, which, you know, I mean, of course that's how that works, right? And you get some really excellent point bonuses here. And you see here that you have a lot of enemies that have very much seeking behavior, like these red bees, for example. They come on the screen, and then they actually come towards you and so it's not a set pattern that you can just memorize and easily avoid it's it can actually be a little tricky to sort of maintain everything that you're trying to deal with at once because you can have multiple enemy types on screen at once that have extremely different behaviors as you're seeing here so that's what's really neat about this game is is the the mechanics of of combat in this are quite a bit mixed up and different from a lot of other shmups, even a lot of other Capcom shmups, which I think think is really cool. And you'll also notice that the traditional quote-unquote bomb power-up, which you just saw right there, is quite a bit different here as well. It's not a destroy-everything-on-screen kind of power-up, kind of like 1942. It's a power-up where the, the purpose is avoidance rather than destruction. So it doesn't actually kill anything that's on the screen. What it will do is it will destroy any enemy projectiles that are coming your way, so any shots that the enemies are sending towards you. And it will temporarily stun the enemy's ability to fire more of them, but it doesn't actually kill anything. So it definitely helps put you in a position to better combat what it is you're up against, but it will not... It can certainly help you out, but it's not an instant get-out-of-jail-free, save-my-ass button, which is what the bomb function is in most other shmups. In most games, it either just clears the screen or clears a very large section of the screen. And it's designed to give you a breather or to just make certain combat scenarios easier. But all this does is give you your tiny little break where it's like, hey, we're going to stop things from shooting at you 
temporarily, but we're not taking anything out. So if you want to deal with these, if you want, if you, we'll give you a little bit of a break, but we're not, we're not going to take away the requirement that you deal with anything. And given the unique enemy types, especially enemies like this, these kinds that actually come at you from off screen, that's pretty significant. And it's a, it really mixes up the play style from what you would traditionally see in games of this nature. And you can already see how frantic this is getting here, despite the fact that this game doesn't actually move at that fast a clip compared to a lot of other shmups, you can see that things can quickly get away from you and get a little bit nuts and out of control. And that's what I like. The, the, the difficulty does ramp up, but it does ease you into it. It doesn't ramp up super quick, and it doesn't necessarily get overwhelming. It gives you an opportunity to use things like the the bomb functionality in a, a bit of a reduced capacity just to, to, to sort of ease you into it and get you used to the type of play that this expects of you. Because if you're the type of person who's play, who played a lot of other shmups, even Capcom ones before you came into this, this might seem really confusing and you might be kind of like, wait, what? And I kind of respect that design philosophy because you know, tutorials were not a thing in the arcade. You know, some arcade games came with a little bit of an instruction sheet sort of on the side of the cabinet or beside the, the control panel or whatnot. But a lot of cabinets, especially if they were hack jobs or conversions, didn't include all that stuff. And even if they did, a lot of people didn't bother reading them anyway. The whole idea of arcade games, right, was that you would just sort of jump in and sort of immerse yourself and figure out as you as you went. But if you were to do that with this game without sort of any any easing in when it came to the mechanics of the, the bomb weapons or anything like that, you might be kind of like, what the heck is this game doing? Why is this not clearing stuff off? And nice job. Thanks, game. You might be like, why is this not clearing anything off? Why is this kind of screwing me over like this? But because the first round is not too hard and it gives you a couple of key opportunities to use that, you can very quickly understand what's going on with it and be like, oh, okay, I know what this is asking of me. And I like that a lot. It was very much, this, this type of thing is what Capcom, where Capcom sort of really shined with a lot of their older titles was, was taking genres and doing neat and unique, what the hell is that? Taking genres and doing neat and unique things with them, but also making them accessible enough and des and designing their mechanics to ease you into them enough so that you weren't overwhelmed, you weren't confused, and you weren't frustrated as a result. There are countless examples of games throughout history, both with Capcom's arcade titles and with a lot of their console titles as well, of this design philosophy. It was something that was clearly very core to, to how they design games in their early years. And it's a really neat way of doing it. It's, it's, it's not changing things up so much that it's overwhelming, and it's designing things in such a way that's like, you know, this is a game that, it's an arcade game. It's designed to make its operators as much money as possible but they were still able to design their games in a way that made them accessible and approachable and different while also not while also adhering to that you know this was still very much a game that you could get as a uh, that you could get as an arcade operator and still make some pretty fat bank on but at the same time it was something new and different and your players could get into that and enjoy it. Oh yeah, fat tomatoes. So it's a pretty fun shmup. It's it's a little different, but it's a little different in a very good way, which is what I really enjoy. And it's a very good addition to, to Capcom Arcade Cabinet. It runs very, very well. This is actually playing at a very nice 60 frames a second with no real slowdown whatsoever, which was pretty impressive for a mid-80s title especially one that had a lot of different AI behaviors and stuff. And it's pretty good. It does have a two-player mode available. It's two-player simultaneous play, which I could see this being a lot of fun with a buddy, actually. I hope to try that out at some point. Maybe I can get Styles to play this with me. Because this is uh, 
this is really good, and it's it's uh, it's slow enough that it that you could sort of ease yourself into it and get uh, get to it a little bit e more easily. But yeah, that is Savage Bees, known in Japan as Exit Exes, published and developed by Capcom in 1985 for arcades. It has also come out on a number of different other platforms. There was an NES version. It's also out in the Capcom Generations Volume 3 collection for some uh, for a couple of older consoles. Capcom Classics Collection. And it's also actually out on the Wii Virtual Console Arcade. So if you did want to buy this game on its own, you could buy it as part of this package, which I think is the better way because you get a lot more features for it. But it is available uh, on there as well. So you have a couple of different options uh, if you want for that. But this is a pretty good shmup and uh, another really nice addition to uh, the Capcom Arcade Cabinet Collection. I'm definitely going to be putting some more time into this, into this game, I think. My name has been Parallax Abstraction. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.